Good evening. Welcome to CityScope. Tonight we have a very special guest in the studios with us. Uh, he's a world-class entertainer who works out in Las Vegas. He's a world-famous pianist, accordionist. He's also done some film composing and some acting. And the great part about all this is he's a Lemonster native and he happens to be my uncle. And uh, his name is Cleto Pimerini. Junior, uh, and he goes by other names, which we'll find out as we get along here. But I'd like to welcome uh, Uncle Clyde, as I know him. Uncle Clyde, how are you? Okay, thank you. So okay. listen, welcome to Lemonster. You haven't been here in a while, right? It's oh, been ten years. Ten years. My, my last high school graduation party. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's changed. Yeah, it's changed a lot in 10 years, hasn't it? Yeah, it's changing yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Changes, yeah. Usually when we do these shows, we like to start at the very beginning. Yeah. So let's turn the clock back. Yeah. And uh, now your, your, your father was uh, an Italian immigrant, right? He came yeah. to this country in 1917, I want to say. I think that's what year he came here. I don't know. But um, I think so. so what year were you born? <laughs> If you 19, don't mind asking. 1927. 27. Okay. Now, were you born? You were born right in Lemonster, right? Yeah, Lemonster, Lemonster Hospital. Okay. And you lived on Central Street. Is that, yeah, yeah, is that Central where you were living Street. At the time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Born, lived there. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, what, what schools did you attend as a kid? I went to a Lincoln's Lincoln School. Okay. Did uh, our junior high school up on uh, up town? Yeah. Yeah, May Gallagher. Right. In an uh, old high school up on West Street. Okay, yep. Now, if, now if that again, street, well, that high school later on became Carter Junior High, and oh, now it it's an abandoned building. It's been abandoned for years and years. No, so I never, oh, it's a beautiful building. It's yes, still there, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's just abandoned right there. now. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. So, yes, I went to um, high school. Now, as a kid, uh, you grew up in, in, on Central Street area. Yeah. What were some of the, your memories, uh, early memories as a kid, you know, playing around there? Uh, what were what were some of your most favorite things to do as a kid? Well, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of guys would come down from up 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 the terrace, the terrace, terrace right. and we meet in the back of my house across that little brook. We used to play around there. Okay, yeah. We used to play find a way to play baseball, or right? Football. There's there a lot of land there, okay. a lot of space. Right. And that's I don't know I guess that's about it. Then we you know play the sports, which are five places okay. to. Uh, yeah. We now had no TV you, those days. Right. There, though. Now, how did your interest in music come about? How did that whole thing come about? Well, my father was a musician, very good. He played about three or four instruments, all well. And he used to began teaching me, me and your father when we were little kids music, especially meter. He said, he said, sis, we have good meter. Right. I'm going to forget that. We to hit the table right. and count one, two, three, four, me, 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 and your old, me and your father. And then I was to watch your father play the piano, and I was trying to copy your father. Your father played the accordion very well, too. Mm -hmm. So I kind of grew up with music. Now, uh, you grew up with music in the house all the time. Yeah. Uh, now, when you were known, uh, you were born, your, your given name is Cleto Pimerino. Yeah, yeah. They called you Junior, right? Because your father's name was Cleto. Well, also. in Lemons today, <clears throat> they changed my name to Clyde. Okay. Because, okay. They, Clyde. you know, they didn't call me Cleto. And, and well, then, once in a while, they called me Cleto. They, right. The older folks would, right. but the younger crowd would call me Clyde. Clyde. Okay, okay. Now, wouldn't the, okay, so you had music in the household all the time. Did your father start, uh, put you on piano, start you learning piano? Yeah, How did that happen? Yeah, your father, uh, I had the same teeth your father had. His name was Sisdale. Okay. He teaches different times, actually, right. and he gives his piano lessons. Yeah. So that's, I had the same teacher. Okay. I was about five or six when I started playing. I was to try to copy your father. Mm -hmm. And life continued, and, you know, then I went to another teacher in Fitchburg. Now, my, my father always told me stories about uh, when he was a kid, his father, you had to practice every day, rain or shine, no matter what happens, you had to practice. Is that how it was for you? Well, my father wasn't that possessive. He wasn't that. He said, look, just practice. Find a time to practice. As long as you practice 20 minutes here. I still had time to play baseball and football with the guys, but I found time to practice, too. Right. Half hour here. Ten minutes here. I always practice, but 
You have to concentrate what you're doing. You just can't practice taking something else. Yeah, he didn't force me, no, no, but I, I just liked it. I did it myself, really. I wanted to play. I always wanted to be a pianist. I knew when I was a young kid that was it. Now, uh, so you took lessons with Frank Tisdale, yes. okay, for a while. You know, everybody, and then everybody in you, town did. Yeah, a lot of people he in town. He was very popular. Yeah. When he I was a kid, I, I took from him, too, she when was, I was a he kid. He came from French Hill. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, you had told me a story uh, earlier today that uh, you, yourself, personally, wasn't, after a while with Mr. Tisdale, you wanted to expand and, and, yeah, and learn I wanted, a little more. <clears throat> uh, a more classical vein. Uh, so I went to a teacher in Fitzgerald called Mr. I can't think of his first name, William, Mr. Williams. He was a graduate of Boston University. He was right near town, near Brooks Drugstore, that's all I remember. He was kind of behind it up there, right. Brooks Drugstore. And I was going to him, he taught me harmony, four point, you know, how to start writing harmony in all my chords. He taught me a lot. He was very good, he was a very nice man. So I really, I was going to two teachers at the same time. Yeah. That was now, it. So you did that while you were in grade school. As you got older, your teen years, you started playing locally in, in bands, yeah. right? Yeah. When I was in junior high school, I formed a band, an eight-piece band. We all got together, and I, I bought the arrangements, so it was my band, right? right. <laughs> I bought the arrangements. And my father, we're like 13, 14 years old. My father would rehearse us once in a while. And all the folks would come down to my kitchen. We were, we were rehearsing in the room, and they are all talking to my mother. It was a lot of fun. I don't forget, I was 13, 14. Do you remember some of the names of the people that played in that band? Sure. Uh, what are they? What are some of the names? Pete Fusco, he became very popular, great clarinet sax player. Woody Rodequins, I, I don't know what happened, happened to him. I think he lives in San Francisco. Yeah. No idea. Uh, Vincent Tiberio. Okay. He lived on Lancaster Street, yeah. way down, about in. Right near. Across the street. Down here. Yeah. 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 And then on drums was Eddie O'Malley. He soon passed away. Yeah, Eddie, yeah. And uh, trumpet was uh, uh, Palumbo. Okay, yeah. Then Goffitt, trombone was uh, Bob LeBlanc. Yep. And on guitar was, uh, oh, I can't think of his name, uh, Kamiye, Kamiye. And uh, I don't know if he had a bass player or not, I forget. Well, that was that band. We used to play around town, the Columbus Hall, and the Elks, the Eagles. And yep. We were like 14, 15 years old. Yeah. But we had no TV those days. We used to go around and play for free. We used to walk up town with how to, how to, how to carry the drums, walk up town. Then we play. Yeah. We used to enjoy it. And I really enjoyed it. I knew then that was my life. I knew I'd be a musician. I was gonna ask you, what made you, you know, think this is what I wanna do, you know, for a career, you know? Well, I began playing and now was you know, it was doing the war now. And the piano players are hard to get, so I used to play with musicians that were a lot older than me, and they taught me. You kind of grew up with them. Right. See, you ought to run try to play in their caliber. I was about 16, 15, 16. I'd play with my cousin, Flop Tarsi, played good sax. And, uh, and, uh, and I played on through high school. And then in high school, with my band, it was doing a war, Second World War, yeah. And uh, once a month, we give a, uh, I, I give a show in high school. It was my show. I get the singers in high school and we practice and I put the show together. I write the little arrangements and, and my band. And to come to the show, they had to pay, buy 10 cent war bond, 10 cents. And the place was jammed. All that money went for the war. Right. So we, so every month I used to do that. We used to give a show for the kids in high school. We all in high school at the same time as they were. So we all knew everybody. And we used to give, they used to love us, you know, kind of. But the play, you couldn't get a seat in the place. Everybody came, bought a 10 cent bond. 10 cents. Maybe it didn't sound, but it was 10 cents in those days was 10 cents. Right, right. 
When I was a kid, I was going to movies and, and limits, limits for 14 cents I would get. Ice cream, see two movies, a couple of attractions, 14 cents. <laughs> wow, 14 cents. <laughs> you were all set, 14 cents. 14 cents, yeah. not 15, right. 14. Did you ever play in any big bands locally? Yeah. yeah. Lo you mean well, on the road? Locally, no, around here. Any? Yeah, well. Did you play in the Frankie D or was that? Yeah, well, I took, I took your, 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 your father's place. Right. Right, but I left. Yeah, yeah. I, not long. I'm maybe a few well, times. Well, did you? Let's let's figure this out now. So, World War II. You didn't do any service time in World War II. Did you? You were too I young. I came. No, no. Uh, I went to service just before the war was over. Okay. Forty-five. I'm still a veteran. I got my veteran cards in my pocket. VA card. I go to veterans for my pills and different things, you know. And uh, oh no. You see, in my day, you had to go into service, it was compulsory. Right. So I told my father, I heard that in the Navy, they had a school of music. You had to be 18 years old. So one day, about 20, 20 of us were playing pool on Water Street. There used to be a pool room there. Right. We were all playing pool. Yeah. And who walks in but a buddy of mine called Jody Pasquale, Frankie Pasquale, my brother-in-law's younger brother. Yeah. He joined the Navy. He looked, he come in and say, hey, you guy, he said, I joined the Navy about two months, just came out of boot camp. So he said, so then I thought about it. Gee, school of music? So about 20 of us got in the bus, we drove to Springfield and all joined the Navy. Wow. Yeah, 20 of us guys and from high school huh. were playing pool. Right. We went down and joined the Navy, Springfield, but somewhere at 18 years old, so our folks had to sign it. Right. So I'm back to my father. I look it. I said, two years in the Navy, three month boot camp. I went to Baltimore, near Baltimore, Maryland, called Bainbridge, Maryland for boot camp. I said, I'll go to music school for one year. What's left? Nine months. And what did it do? Tell me nine months in the Navy. So my father said, No, I was already playing the piano already, you know, right? right. With bands. Right. I already knew how to. Yeah. So he said, All right. So my father signed the paper. Now I'm in the Navy. Yeah, I went to boot camp, Bainbridge, Maryland. I came back home on leave, 10 days. Now, when I went back, they asked you, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a musician. All right, so they sent me down to music school in the Navy. Well, in those days in Washington, D.C., called Anacostia. Anacostia. Now it's in Norfolk, Virginia, they moved. Okay, yeah. So I went down there in the Navy, school of music, all excited. I'll be one year in Washington, D.C. Wow, I'm all excited, you know. I'm only 17 and a half, right? So I took my test. Well, being a musician, I already played with the Italian band. I played the bass, drums, and right. cymbals with the Italian band. That yep. your, your brother Steve yeah, Dark and Colonial Dutch. band. Let me Colonial band. I played band. there yep. in high school, you know, with the yep. drums and cymbals. Your father played the uh, xylophones. Yeah. Yeah. And my other brother, Paul, played the French horn. Okay. Yeah. And my father could play, he played everything. He played tuba, alto, right. I, baritone. Baritone. Yep. And, hey, we're all in the band. Yep. So I was, I was already playing. So I'm down at School of Music in the Navy. I took a test. I got 3.9. Now, four point is perfect. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> Two days yeah. later, I'm called in the office, and the commander says, Son, he says, you attended the School of Music, but he said, you already graduated. I never took a class. I didn't see anybody. Wow. He said, we need a pianist in China. So you're going to go to Shanghai, China, with a band. Yeah. That's what I did. Wow. I had my own. So maybe, that's how you got to China. You went to Shanghai. Yeah, yeah Shanghai. Yeah. I went across to Troy's Island, which is outside of San Francisco. Here's a funny story. And I'm in Treasure Island, and you know, you're in the Navy now, and every day you're gonna do some kind of a duty. You can't just hang around. Right. So all of a sudden, we're all a bunch of us are, and they're, they're giving us names to do different errands, do different things in the Navy. I'm in Treasure Island, that's before you go overseas, called near San Francisco. Yeah. It's no longer there. Now okay. it's condos and right, right. shopping area. It was then called Treasure Island. Yeah. And this guy calls my name, and he says, Pierre Barini, yeah, I said, come over here. So 
So I said, what did I do? So I walked up and said, sit over here. Let me stand over here. So after everybody left, he said, by the way, he says, are you Cleto's son? I said, I'm Lemister too. <laughs> he was a first class Navy guy. He was in the Navy 10 years. <laughs> there was Catalini. Okay. I knew a younger brother. Wow. I, know he was, I didn't know who he yeah, was. Yeah. I didn't do anything. He yeah. sent me to San Francisco. Go take a, get lodged. He said, go to San Francisco. He wow. his special pass. Yep. I did nothing for 10 days but go to San Francisco and walk around. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to Treasure Island because I knew him. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> then I went to China yep. on a transport. Okay. So mm -hmm. when you were out there, did you Shanghai. play in the Navy band? Did oh, you? yeah. We were so on, it was on a Wangpu River, heavy cruiser called okay. Helena. Okay. Heavy Cruises are named after states. Helena is the capital of uh, Montana. Right. Helena, Helena. Yeah. I was on a 22 band, 22 piece band. What a band. Oh, yeah? Fabulous. Wow. wow. We played great arrangements. Yeah. Navy School of Music Day. Yeah. You know, so I was there for about 18, 18 months. Yeah. I came back and I got this in San Diego. That was my Navy career. So but when I was in Shanghai, you want to hear some things about Shanghai? Well, I want to get okay, back to your, your career because we only have so much time. We only yeah, have yeah. Uh, 35 hours of we'll film here. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you came, uh, you, you, you're discharged from the Navy. Yeah, I get Did you come back home? Yeah, I went back home. And, and so my father had a, con a, a contracting business. Yeah. Housing contracting. Right. So he asked me, what do you want to do? And I'm my father. Yeah. Now I'm two years older. Yeah. I says, well... <clears throat> I want to be a pianist. He said, sure you want to be in my, in my business. He was very understanding. Yeah. He wasn't too happy. Right. But he understood. I said, no, no, I want to be a musician. I went to New York City, which I love. And I, I, I was living in New York City. I, get into, into, I studied with Lenny Tristano, that jazz teacher. Right. But a group of us studied. Okay. But I knew it wasn't for me. I wanted more out right. of light, deeper right. music and different things. So I decided to go to college. Okay. And in my day, there were only about three or four schools that were well-known music schools. University of Miami, Michigan University, and Northwestern. Okay. But Northwest was in Chicago. Right. I knew I could play with the bands. I figured, hey, I'm going to play and make some money. Yep. Even though I was a veteran, I went to Northwest through the GI Bill. Yeah. Hmm. I joined the Chicago Union, and I did very good around Chicago. One summer, I went on a row with a famous band called Frankie Masters on a Chicago. Oh, a tremendous band on a row over the country he played during my summer vacation. So I picked Chicago, good school of music, Northwestern, <clears throat> in Chicago. I played around Chicago. It's not a lovely city, Chicago, right. you know, a big city. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I had a chance to go to Europe. So I came back home and I told my sister Mary, you're on, what should right. I do to you? She goes, you kidding? Take it, go to Europe. Mary says, go, so I went to Europe. As a young composer, I won a scholarship from Northwestern, but a small one, not a real, enough to get by on. Right, right. So I went to Rome. And I was, I was, I was hanging around Piazza de Spagna. Piazza de Spagna is the place where everybody hangs around with anybody. All over the world come there. Yeah. Very famous place, Piazza right. de Spagna. Yeah. And you meet everybody. And every night during the day, I write my music. I will work on a string quartet, whatever, different thing. And we'd all meet. A guy from Greece, a painter, a musician from Czechoslovakia, a writer from the Bronx, New York. All over the world, we would meet. We'd all chew the fat. Then we'd go to Trattoria, Italian kitchen. We'd all buy a big jug of wine. And we'd talk about what we did that day. It's very interesting. I used to enjoy that. We were all young guys yeah. in our 20s. And we'd drink wine all night. Now, was so, this when you ended up in Paris for a while? Or? No, before no. Paris. Oh, just before Paris. Okay. I was in Rome. Okay. And. It wasn't still enough for me. I right. wanted to do other things. I'm a pianist. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew this Jewish Italian guy, Italian Jew, which is very few over there. Yeah. He was born in Rome, spoke good English. Yeah. So I told him my problem. He said, hey, since I get you the best job in Rome, come on. So I went to Vivani, though. It's going like Charles Yeah. 
Hotel Excelsior, is the place. Wow. I walk in the lounge and I meet the owner. So Joe, named Giuseppe B. Ratz, his name is <laughs> Joe Ratz. Told Cruciani then who I was. And so I sat down and played. He said, hey, he says, okay, he says, you start playing tomorrow night. So I went to work there, two weeks. It was called the Rupert Tapea, means jockey club. Right. Right on the advantage to hotel, like South, everybody hung around there. Anyway, he didn't pay me, so I left. So about four days go by, and this Joe guy comes to find me. And he says, hey, he says, what happened to you? He says, what happened to you? Didn't get paid. He's not paying me. He said, come with me. So he, he and I go back up to the club. So the guy says, where were you? I said, where was I? I said, that's where I come from. We get paid when we play. He said, I want to see if they like you first. I said, what do you mean they like me? So what's, what happened? He said, they like you. He said, I said, all right, so that's all. You come back to work? I said, sure. But first, I said, you owe me two weeks' pay. Wow. He looked at me and he says, American, Americans. Yeah. He wasn't too happy. Yeah. But he paid me two weeks. Then I said, I want to get paid every Saturday night. He said, all right. And he did. Every Saturday night, he had my envelope with the cash. Yeah. Tell your money. Some Italian money is big. Yeah. yeah. Big. Big. Fold. Folded. Paper. They yeah. folded. <laughs> and I was there so much like I was loaded. You know? yeah. yeah. And I, I was there 10 months. Yeah. I played for a lot of movie stars. Oh, uh, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of Brigida. Yeah. 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 She's coming there. Yeah. Anna Magnani. Yeah. I was playing with Ingrid Bergman, Ivy Gardner. They all came into play, they not because in of me. Yeah. They came in, I was there. Right. And I played for them. Wow. And Ingrid Bergman, if she come in, I play as time goes by from the movie Casablanca. Yeah. And she thanked me. Yeah. But she had a cigarette holder. Today, we, I don't know if we accept that today. Yeah. Not many but in people. those days, yeah. we didn't mind. Right. And we went with the, her. She was so elegant, Ingrid Bergman. She had a long hole with a little small cigarette at the end. Well, whatever. She, yeah. she thanked me. She'd go to her table and nobody bothered her like today, paparazzi. Nobody right. bothered her, nothing. Right. I'd be King Farouk, who King Farouk was. Yeah. King yeah. Farouk was yeah. a, well, I played for him too. Yeah. He'd yeah. come in the club. So I played for, it was deep place in Rome. Yeah. <clears throat> Am I name dropping? Is that okay? No, that's good. We want you to name drop. That's so a good thing. now I'm playing there one night. A guy come in. You want to hear my Avery Gardner story? Sure. Yeah. Well, Avery, this is a, this is a beautiful story. So, okay. Avery, so I'm playing. I was playing eight to two. And I'm playing by one thirty. The no one who plays. <laughs> you were talking about you and me. <laughs> no one who plays but me and the bartender. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of bored. Just. Kind of my eyes closed, killing time, just improvising on the piano. And I hear this voice say, excuse me, excuse me. She says, do you take requests? And while I turned around, there's Ava Gardner with a French director named John Renoir. Yeah, this is a funny Renoir. story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they're there, and I was shocked. I was stunned. You're so elegant, beautiful. And her favorite tune was Tenderly. Okay. So she came in, I played Tenderly for her. She came in a couple of times later, then she left. Now, I kept on playing. Now the place is dead. All of a sudden, I don't know what happened, guys started coming in. I don't know how to get the word out Rome, but she was in that club. Right. All of a sudden, there's about... 10 or 15 guys in there. They're all staring at me and her. No one's saying one word. Just me and her. And while I'm playing, they're not saying nothing. They're looking at her or right. me, whatever. Right. Now she talked to me and I played tunes for her. So we played at 2.30 in the morning. Wow. I played for her. Yeah. Half hour later. Yeah. She says, what time did you finish? I says, well, I'm all done. Oh, she says, well, thank me. She thanked me. She says, yeah. where do you go now? Now, this is the funny part. Well, I said, there's an all-night restaurant called the Piccolo Slam. Have you lucky Luciano? Yeah. Well, he owned it okay. in Rome. Yeah. The only place in Rome open all night, they serve 
American omelets, ham and, egg, ham and cheese wow. omelets, wow. ham and egg sandwiches, call it, Rupert, call it Piccolo Slam. Yeah. It was right near, down the same Via Veneto, you take a right, there it was, right near the Hotel Excelsior. Yeah. As I go to a place called the Piccolo Slam at breakfast, he goes, Avery Gardner says, do you mind if I join you? <laughs> so me and Avery Gardner, oh, so John Renoir come up to me, he says, uh, I see, no, I'm a young boy, 23 years old, right? Right. right. He says, I see you in a big room. He says, you be nice to her. So Avery Garda looked at him. Avery Garda says, don't worry about me and him. We'll be okay. To John Renoir, yeah. he was happy. Yeah. He left. Because we were saying to her, that was the place to stay. Yeah. She and I walking down Via Veneto, Quarter three in the morning with ten guys behind us. Yeah. We all walk into the Piccolo Slam, and Tony, the waiter who spoke good English, looks says, he was shocked. Yeah. The place is dead. Yeah. We walk in, me, Avery Gardner, and all around us are these guys, not still saying a word. Yeah. But she smoked. Oh, yeah. So she took so all the lights come out trying to yeah. light a cigarette. Yeah, the lightest. Yeah. Like a movie scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we walked back up to the house at about 3.30, quarter five again. And she kissed me in the cheek. She thanked me. She says, if everyone in the States, you see me, or see me, you come and see me. She gave me a $10 bill. A $10 bill was a lot of money in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. And she signed around it. Oh, yeah? Like, uh, she never put my, here's the thing, she didn't put my name down. Right. She said, I had a lovely time, uh, never attacking very much, love Ava. Yeah. I put the $10 bill in my pocket, but she didn't put my name on it. So anyway, after that, I went to Capri, Italy. I played for Atlanta Turner. Should I keep on going? Well, let's, let's, uh, okay. switch, let's switch gears a little bit and have you coming back after you were in Italy and Rome. Yeah, yeah. How did you get settled in New York, playing in New York, or, or did you... Uh, My problem with you, I played Paris, too. You played Paris, too? Oh, okay. yeah. Right, okay. I was in Paris, I played... After Tony's Rome? Team. After Rome, you After Rome, Paris? I met a band leader. I played Florence, Venice, Italy. I, went right. from, I met a band leader from Paris, working in Rome. Yeah. Name was Bernard Hilda. He said, hey, so you ever get to Paris, call me up, so I get a job for it. So I went to Paris a year and a half later, and I called him up. Yeah. He says, hey, yeah, the piano's from Rome. He said, what are you doing? I said, I just got here. He said, you start playing tomorrow night. Wow. I went to Bonaparte on Sean Jose, a beautiful yeah. restaurant called Bonaparte. I was there for six months. You ever hear of Herb Jeffries? Yes. Yeah. I accompanied him. Yeah. Played Club, Club de Paris for about six months. Mm -hmm. And then, then I went to London. I would play your socials in Germany. I was wow. stationed in Wiesbaden. Wow. Hmm. I went to Copenhagen. Now I'm all done. I went to Copenhagen just on vacation. I walked into a club. I saw the piano. I said, my five play? Okay, I got a job in Copenhagen. They said, just from New York City, I jammed the place. I went to Stockholm, Sweden. Then back to Rome. I said, bye to my friends who I could live with. I went to New York City. Now, you played... Uh Played around in New York City for a while. Oh right? yeah. I when did you when did you uh, work on the cruise ship line? That was cruise after ships. Work? Yeah, I'm in New York City. <clears throat> yeah. And I knew this the booker for cruise ships. He said, "Hey, Pete, anytime I want to take a vacation, let me know. I'll get you on cruise ships." Yeah. So I went to him. I said, "I'm on time for vacation." He got me a job on a cruise ship called the Grace Line. You know, Santa Rosa. I was going from New York to Caracas, Venezuela. And then I did that, I worked on an English ship called Canard. I was going from New York to Bermuda, Nassau, up and down the island, St. Tom. Who's going to St. Martin? St. Martin. Yeah, yeah. Which is half French, half right. Dutch. Right. The French side. Yeah. <laughs> ugly. The Dutch side. So clean, let's, nice. Let's focus a little bit. You, you were playing in, in New York. No. Yeah. This is where you. The, my favorite part of your career is, is when you got involved with John Cassavetes working oh. on the yeah, film John Shadows. Yeah, John Cassavetes, the movie called Shadows, right. yeah. <clears throat> Can you tell us a little bit how that happened? Sure. I knew this 
kid from uh, Philadelphia named Jack Ackerman, who's a lyricist, and I know him from I'll play. I've always worked in New York City, always worked, never out of work. Piano bars, I did very well in New York. Yep. Less than that society bands, I'd work in the Hamptons every summer. I love Long Island, but so I saw Jack. Jack said, Perry he says, I'm in front of you. You know John Calvini? Yeah. He said, well, he says, he's making a movie called Shadows. So I'm in it. He said, I want you to meet him. He said, I, gonna, he said, I got a song I want to write. He said, you and I can put it together. So I met John Calvini. Well, I'm surprised no one followed this. It was the first time ever done. It was all improvised. Right. We had no script. Right. Just that you and I are talking. Yeah. That they did. They would cut us. Yeah. They splice it. The whole thing came to about six hours. Right. Had put down two and a half hours. Right. You had to cut half the thing off. So this, it came was, to this me, was 1959, around there, 58, 59, yeah. I think. No, yeah. no, 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 was no. Was it earlier? Later. Later? I Let's think it was see. 59. The film came out in 59 or 50. 60. Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, later on, I went to cruise ships later. Yep. And uh, I met John, and he said, uh, all right, he says, uh, uh, so Jack and I wrote a song, and he liked it. So then he said, hey, he says, look, he says, we have a singer here, and this guy is supposed to be his piano player. He says, he says, uh, could you teach him where to put his hands while you play? I said, sure, like he's playing. Right. I said, sure. And he used to give me 20 bucks an hour. Okay. Good money in those days. Yeah. John Cavidi. Yeah. So we go to so we used to go to a studio in New York called Nola Studios. Still the, all the big band girls. They, they had all kinds of room. Yeah. He never came to rehearsal. He never showed up. His name is Rupert Cross. Remember the movie uh, show called Get Smart? Yes. Yeah. He was the tall black kid. Right, right. Him, yeah. Rupert. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was supposed to be the pianist. Yeah. He never showed up. So I said, look at John, I said, you pay me for nothing. He don't come to rehearsal. Okay, Perry, look, he says. <laughs> he says, can you act? I said, the whole world is staying. <laughs> he started laughing. All right, he says, I want to put you in a movie. Y'all going to play in a movie. We'll make him the manager. <laughs> so that's how you got a that's movie. That's how you got it, yeah. He started, he liked me, he says, he started saying, I'm in a movie. First, about 45 minutes, different right. scene, but he's coming down about 15. Yeah, they had a longer cut, you know, and then you eventually got cut and cut and yeah, cut. Yeah, I found started getting yeah. cut, cut. And one time I told John, yeah, so the time we had at the viewing room, I sat next to John, the wonderful guy. Yeah. I said, John, I said, I don't like that picture of me. What? Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah. nice. Anyway, uh, you went you you went by the name of Pierre Marini back back then. Well, right? P I R. Oh, by the way, go back to that film. Yeah. It won the first Con Festival award in, in oh, Con yeah. Festival. Oh yeah. It was in Broadway a year and a half. I took my folk down to see it. Okay. My mother said, <laughs> after he saw it, my mother said, "You didn't pitch anymore." I said, "No." So let's get out of here. <laughs> So yeah, it wasn't the type of movie. Yeah, yeah no, it uh, wasn't the type of movie. Well, it was about an interracial relationship. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, way ahead of his time. Black and white. Right. They weren't heard of those days. No, no. Never. He you don't off. realize that's, that film is taught in film schools all over the world. That's, that's a really famous... You're probably... I think you're one of the last cast members that, that are still around. Yeah, maybe. I don't think, I don't think there's many anyway, more Anyway, when I was members. in Capri, Italy, I met Mr. Vandernoth. He owned Barn and Bailey Circus. Yeah. And I was called by Clyde Peer. Okay, yeah. He says, well, there was a lion tamer named Clyde Beatty. He was very famous in those days. Right. And this is the owner of Barn and Bailey Circus, Mr. North. He says, what's this Clyde Peer? So you look like a Clyde Peer, he told me. Cape New York. Yeah. He says, what's your name? I told him. Yeah. He says, cut your last name in half. Call my Pierre Marini. Yeah. That's better than Clyde Pierre. So that's what you did. That's what I did. Yeah. I went by Pierre Marini. Because if hand. you look in shadows, if you look at the credits, you're, you're listed Pierre as Marini. Pierre yeah. Marini. Marini. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But there there's no E in no, that. No, it's P-I-R. But, P -I -R. But, I, but I put the E back in. I like it. Afterward, yeah, After. yeah, yeah. But he told Mr. Yeah. Knott, he was a nice man. He was in the club I played in, 
It's too late in Capri all the years while number they do it. Wow. It's too late. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah. Wow. Well, no, and then I well, burned. So, okay, so, the, uh, well, you were friends with Casavides and all his buddies that used to well, hang around with them. back in 68. You used to help them move lights and Yeah, say, we used to move stuff around <laughs> with them. We have John Fisher's house, did the floor, <laughs> paint the walls. Yeah. And so 68, all his friends, 66, yeah. I forget, the late 60s, John yeah. Casavides says, hey, he says, we're well, moving to California. Come on, Peter, let's go to California. But I've always worked in New York. I didn't want to go to California. Never knowing, four years later, I'd be in Vegas. Four years later. So all the gang went, he got him in movies. He got him in sitcom. Look at Seymour Cassell. Yeah. He's still doing work in Hollywood. True, John oh, yeah? got him started. Yeah. Okay. Seymour. Yeah. Yeah. Rupert, a lot of passed away, but right. Seymour's still going, yeah. you know. So I never went to, they always left never saw John. Right, right. I went to Hollywood. That was so the early 70s is when you moved to, uh, to Vegas. You, 1970. Okay. I, uh, New York are very expensive, New right. York. And I, was, I was tired of my apartment, paying rent for what? So I figured I'll go to Vegas. And, what was, what was uh, Vegas like back in 1970? Was it much different than it oh, is today? Oh, yeah, only eight casinos. Eight casinos. Now there's yeah. 38. Yeah. 38 casinos. So way back in the 80s, the president of the showboat, which is no longer there, he made a speech on TV. He said, listen, or 80, I don't know, 80s, late 80s, listen, he says, Vegas, we're growing too big, he says. We're going to ruin Vegas. The president of the showboat hotel, casino, he passed away. That went bankrupt. We're getting too big to, to, to house all these people here, he said. You can't do this. Well, forget it. They did it. Howard Hughes came in, bought this, bought this, everybody bought everything. And What was it like? Uh, you, you got to Vegas right around the time when the Rat Pack was big and Sinatra and all his friends used I to... I came right after it. Okay. But I knew them. Yeah. Because in the 70s in Vegas... <clears throat> There are a lot of non-profit parties for different organizations, all non-profit. Well, I was their pianist. I played for the I just played because I wanted to. That was me given for the non-profit party. Yeah. And everybody in town would come and perform. That's how I met Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, Liberace. I knew very well. They'd all come and perform for, this, for the show. They'd all do five, ten minutes. Right. But all the money they made... They would give to different high schools or grammar schools or different organizations, but he needed. Vegas is that way. They well, still in those do it days, today. Was, was Vegas really run by the mob back in those days, or was it was that well, all? Well, I got the, I got at the edge of the mob. Okay. I got at the end of it. Yeah. Didn't bother me. All the people loved the mob. They, they're not sorry they left. Because everybody worked, but the, all the corporations came in, they go by numbers. They, yeah. they closed places down. 88, every hotel had a 28-piece orchestra. They let them all go. They closed the lounges down. They threw me out of work. But I found a job. I still found work. I always found a way to work. And they kind of cleaned house. A lot of guys went to France, Missouri, Seattle, Washington, Dallas, Texas, to make a living. They couldn't make it in Vegas anymore. Vegas is the entertainment you know, capital of the world, but for musicians, some like Celine Dion, she has an eight piece band, great, live guys, but right. that's just this. Sammy Davis to get a 25 piece band. Yeah, yeah. Sinatra, 25 piece, when he came in town. Now it's different. Now, now it's, it's different. They all come compact. Yeah. So all of you, my union now is just a figurehead. That's too bad. Doesn't mean much. Yeah, yeah. That's how But somehow you're, you're still playing. Yeah, well, yeah. as a pianist, <clears throat> I found you can yeah, make a living. I yeah. made a living. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you also do other work? To you did some film scoring work for some. Yeah, some a long, things. long yeah. time ago. Yeah. In fact, I met the director of one of the movies we did one day walking down Broadway, and he said the movie we did is very big in in, in Belgium. So I went to ASCAP. You know what ASCAP right. is? I told him the movie I did, and I started getting checks in my mail, royalty checks. Yeah. And I made more 
Playing <laughs> big, right in the score. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It wasn't much. Movies still, are I had a four piece band. Well. Right. Yeah. But still, yeah. Yeah. That, 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 you know, I've been. But dying. you're still, you're, you're still out there. You're still playing. You're, yeah. you're in the big hotels now, the Venetian Hotel. Oh, the Venetian, by the way, is owned by Sheldon Allen. Sheldon Allen. He's from Dorchester. Okay. He's yeah. a Dorchester yeah. boy. Mm. Yeah. He owns the Venetian. He's yeah. a billionaire. He yeah. owns the Venetian yeah. and the Palazzo. Yeah. He owns both. Plus, he owns Macau in China. He owns this, and Steve Wynn owns another one five miles away, who owns the Encore. Right. And they say someday it's going to be a strip. They're going to try to build other places. Them. Right. Connections. Right. Yeah. Right. Five miles. Most yeah. nice trip's about five miles. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was when I was out in Vegas last year, I was surprised in the casinos, you know, it was dead. There's nothing going on, you know. There weren't many people at the tables, you know, I don't know if the economy has, has really gotten Well, it's to, getting better now. Is it getting oh, yeah, better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, Super Bowl coming up? Right, right. It'll be jammed. It's going to be jammed, yeah. Okay. Guys come over the world just to bet. Yep. On yeah. the Super Bowl. Okay. They, they put up these big screens, they have food coming. It's very interesting, right. very energetic. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, Vegas, like last, like I play weddings all the time from Germany, Vienna, Sweden. They're all over the world coming to get married there. Right. And I play their weddings sometimes. Right. So. so you must know how to play every kind of wedding song known to man, you know, <laughs> well, every nationality. Well, funny thing about it. <laughs> yeah. There's a tune called Paca Bell. Yes. Yeah. Well, all the weddings we play that. That's, that's right. an old, written by a Polish composer named Paca Bell. That was yeah. his name. Yeah. It's a canon. Right. We say play the Paca Bell. They all want it. From right. all over the world, we play that and the bride comes down today. Yeah. It's a beautiful can, beautiful piano piece. Is there one song, what's the most requested song that you have to play when you're playing like in Vegas in the Venetian? Do you have, is there like one song that most, that people request all the time or is there? No. No, it's, it's all over the, all over Everybody's the map. Everybody's different. Yeah, yeah. But a lot like Sinatra tunes, or right. you're going to play Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Which yeah. I play right. medley from that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, being around the world, I know a lot of tunes, French, Italian, Jewish, Greek, because you have to. When you yes. work on cruise ships, you have to be very versatile. Right. You get all kinds of people come on cruise ships. You have to try to satisfy everybody. Yeah. And Lester Landon Society Band in New York City, Lester Landon was very famous. And one thing he insisted, whatever you had a request, you better know the tune or he'd right. be embarrassed. Right. Right. So yeah. who have to know the tune? The piano player. That's amazing. I mean, it's amazing you can remember the chord changes for, you know, for all these millions of tunes, you know, you can play by ear and it just comes out, you know, but it's just amazing to me that you know this many tunes, you know, in your head that you can just sit down and play. Well, you know? but yeah, it comes, you have to walk a second yeah, nature. Yeah, just yeah. play, you know, whatever. You right. just, you, once I learn them, I, right. I don't usually forget them. Yeah, yeah. But one thing that would help me I don't forget names. I forget names, but I never forget faces. Right. So if a guy requests a tune, he's come in three months later, I'll play a song, he walks in the door. Yeah. They never forget oh, that. Yeah. And I associate them with a song. And, right. I, and I associate them. While I'm playing, I'm looking at them and I'm putting them together. Like I'm computerizing. Right. They come in, I play the song. And that's it. And I know all the requests. Well, I still do it. Yeah. Guys can hear me in, Ven in Venetian. I still play the walk and I play the song for them. <laughs> well, they like that. That yeah. little special. Yeah. That's uh, right. It's touch. like, yeah. 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 And that helps. Well, think about that. You've almost, you've been there for over 40 years. Think about that. Exactly. You've seen Vegas change the whole. 44 years. That's, that's a I saw the whole thing change. Yeah. 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 Uh, I also played the Desert Inn and Howard Hughes was up in a penthouse. Right. We never seen him. Never came down with the main bed. He's coming down tonight. <laughs> I never seen him as <laughs> right. long as I live. Wow. And Mr. Bob Mayhew used to work for him, used to go to the telephone in the lobby, call him up. Even Bob Mayhew never seen him. Right. He'd tell him over the phone what to do. We all knew Bob. Like, he's dead now. He was yeah. Yeah. talking in Vegas. He's very, Bob Mayhew. He right. Never, never seen him. Yeah. Walter Kane, the entertainment director, who I knew very well, never seen him. They yeah. talk over the phone. Yeah. Hmm. 
He's a very eccentric guy. Yeah, Howard yeah. Hughes. He owned half the half the city. Half the strip, yeah, yeah. There's a big section of the town called Summerlin. So the upper class lived there. They named after his grandmother, Mrs. Summerlin. Mm -hmm. Named that center of his grandmother. Called Summerlin. Yeah. It's a part of Vegas that the pretty well to do live. You know what's amazing to me is when you fly into Vegas today and you're flying over you see these housing developments and there's thousands and thousands of housing and the, you know the people tell me that half of them are empty you know there's oh, not sure. many, oh, yeah. there's not many sure. people in a lot houses. left a lot yeah. could lost jobs right a lot can't stay because they gamble too much right. they lose houses a lot yeah. of reasons why I left right but i've been there 44 years i have a nice house yeah but when i go to gamble i go to lose 20 bucks i'm going to get rich i'm right. really not a gambler right yeah. That's why I'm still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see people. I see people wait for their wives and their husbands. Right. And they look so bored while right. they're playing the machines. And yeah. I've been all through that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. real sorry for them. Have you ever seen anybody lose like big, big time? Well, we're not to play the Desert Inn. Right. Because the guy from Hong Kong would come in once a month. We'd all wait for him. Yeah. It was good to us too. Right. Hong Kong, Chinese guy, yeah. and he go and he play Baccarat. Now, you know Baccarat? Well, I know of it. You know, I've well, never played it, yeah. He had all these chips in front of him. Right. And he put them all on one number. Yeah. He used to make, maybe it took him all night, a couple million dollars. Wow. He lose, win, lose, win, yeah. but he finally walked out a winner. Hmm. A couple of million. Yeah. Came from Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> We all waited for the guy, I don't know his name, but we, yeah. we knew who he was. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I was playing the desert in. I yeah. was there with a group in the lounge. We could see him in the lounge out in Baccarat. Did you ever meet any of the big uh, mobsters or any of the, uh, you know, the real big organized crime guys? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was in New York, I played for the Gambino family. Yeah. I had a lot of guys yeah. in the family. Yeah. They didn't bother me. Yeah. I never bothered them. Yeah. They just leave you alone, you do your job, and you go home, that's right. all. But in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Vegas, remember the movie Casino? Yes, I was going to ask you about that and sure, Goodfellas. Sure, I you know, knew the yeah, guy. Yeah. Remember the guy they blew up in the car? Yes. I yeah. should know him. You know him? Yeah. Sure, I have to yeah. talk to him at the hotel stars us. Yeah, that's the Robert uh, De Niro Robert, character. Right? Yeah, yeah, Nero, Robert, yeah, but yeah. this guy was tall, about six feet three. Right. He was not right. taller than Robert Nero. Yeah. But he used uh, they blew him up and he moved to Florida. He came back about five years ago. His name was Rothstein, or yes. Roth, yeah. Rothstein, yeah. I think. Tall, thin guy with glasses. I've talked to him at the hotel stand. I have to play there once in a while. He's a nice guy. Hmm. I don't know what it is. Who cares? You just talk to these guys, whatever. They talk to you, you talk to them. And then I knew a few guys I saw around Vegas. I was there. They were still living. They were pretty high up there. Got it built a desert in, I think, was one of the guys. Right. I see him around. Well, you've been you've been playing Vegas for forty four years. Forty four years. You're still playing, God yeah. bless you. And you're still gonna continue, right? Oh yeah, as long as I can move my fingers. As long as you can move your fingers, you're yeah, gonna keep going. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> and they still it. hire you, so yeah. that must be, you know. They hire me, they don't they, they don't know a kid, but they hire me anyway. Right. So, so I'm their <laughs> uncle, <or> whatever. <laughs> maybe they feel maybe they feel sorry for you been around for so long. Well, you better hide up here. <laughs> I never thought of that. They feel sorry for me. Uh, well, you know, well, <laughs> when I played the castways, yeah. now it's the Mirage. Yeah. The Bellagio was the Dunes. I was to play right, the top of the right. Dunes. Beautiful yeah. place. All owned by uh, the top of the dunes. I knew the man very well, his son very well, uh, yeah. Jewish guy from St. Louis. And uh, anyway, uh, when I played uh, the Castaways, I forget why I mentioned the Castaways for. I played a piano bar there for yeah. three years, just local joints. Yeah. Now yeah. they throw them down, they yeah. built it. Yeah. All different. Yeah. The, the Venetians beat the Sands or Tunnel right. Rat Pack, but yeah. the Venetians. That was my favorite one. Now, are they very... building any new ones now? Is, is there any... Well, yeah, a new one came in from a guy from Detroit, okay. downtown. He calls it Mr. D's. Okay. It's yeah. a Detroit casino. Yeah. Hmm. The owner's from Detroit. Yeah. It's downtown. Okay. They're yeah. building downtown. Right, yeah, they're expanding. Free. Yeah. They're yeah. building that now. Wow. 
But uh, they come and they, they renovate them. Like the old Imperial Palace is no longer there. Right. Now it's called the Quag. Yeah. They renovate them, that's yep. all. But the Venetian is still one of the best. Bellagio, that's a famous one. Well, uh, it's been very nice talking to you. Same here. Is there anything that you want to add, or are you pretty much okay? <laughs> what always happens is these, these interviews, as soon as we shut the cameras off, you think of the 900 things that you should, have, you should have talked about. But you know what we'll do? We'll keep it open, and we'll have you back sometime. We'll do another one okay, when you're... Okay, all right, okay, all right, okay.